Welcome again everybody and thank you for joining our global webinar day on 5 Modern Fault Management Techniques to Tease You. My name is Dietmar Kneidel, Director of Sales Europe with Infosim and I will be your moderator for today's event. Joining us from our, Austin in, uh, from our office in Austin, Texas is my colleague John Olson. John is a senior network engineer, has been working for and with Infosim for about three years now. Good morning, John. Did you have your coffee yet? I have, Dimar. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Uh, for those of you who are wondering why I'm saying good morning uh, to John, he's, uh, of course, again, joining us from Austin, Texas, and it is still pretty early in the morning over there. So before I hand over to John, I just wanted today's audience to know that all of you are automatically put on mute to keep down the background noise. So for us to be able to see and answer your questions, please type them in the questions window at the bottom of the GoToWebinar application. We will be answering all of your questions either directly in the chat or at the end of our webinar in our Q&A session. Also, please take note that this event is being recorded and all of you will be notified via email tomorrow on how to access the recording. Well. I'd like to go ahead now and turn things over to our presenter, John Olson. John, you ready? I am. Thank you, Dietmar, and thank you, everyone, for attending today. Uh, we hopefully have an informative session for you scheduled for 30 minutes. We have a lot of material to get through in those 30 minutes, so we will uh, get started right away. Um, as Dimar mentioned, the uh, topic is fault management uh, and some teasing around fault management. We use the word tease to uh, be an acronym to describe a number of the sort of highlights around our fault management module or the fault management part of StableNet. Hopefully this will be a good introduction to those of you who are familiar with StableNet but maybe uh, don't necessarily use the fault management piece a lot, um, as well as those who may be new to StableNet and just want to understand who we are. I think this will be a nice way to introduce a lot of different things about our product. So uh, as we get started, uh, just a, a quick uh, single slide, a little bit about us. Uh, our product and our company has been around for over 11 years, de uh, developing and delivering StableNet to global organizations. We focus exclusively on large enterprises and the telco slash service provider sector, which both of those uh, classifications of, of businesses really have a huge need for fault management in particular. And so I think this topic will be very appropriate. Uh, we, uh, I like to say that we've been around long enough uh, to know that the product uh, that you should know that the product works, is stable, uh, has a number of customers, and, and really works extremely well, but is also new enough that we have uh, developed and designed everything with a very modern architecture. This isn't a 40-year-old product that has had to be drug into the new world. It's really something that was designed from the ground up to be part of sort of the way things are done today with uh, open interfaces, APIs, uh, and such, and we'll talk a lot about that as we go forward. Uh, and the last piece is that we are a very um, uh, open and flexible uh, product. We're multi-vendor, uh, so everything that I talk about uh, in the different um, uh, slides coming forward are appropriate for virtually any vendor that that's out there, whether we support them today or need to add support in the future, which we do constantly to uh, help our customers with maybe unique products. Um, so if you, if I don't say a particular vendor or something, please don't think that that means we don't support them. Uh, we can and do support just about everybody. So. Uh, the acronym T's, uh, we're going to start with T. T is for traditional fault management must-haves. These are the things that, again, if you're a large organization, your uh, NOC uh, or the people who are taking care of watching for faults in the network, these are sort of the, you know, the, the base level things that you absolutely have. Now, I think we do those things in a very unique and advanced way, but I just want to make sure that everybody understands we, we have incorporated the, all of the must-haves. Things like event consolidation, prioritization, and enrichment, right? So as events come in, 
um, primarily through log messages, but there's some other ways to get them as well. Um, we can uh, recognize when multiple messages are really related to the same event. We can prioritize those based on severity. That can be either um, based on the severity as it comes in or severity that we assign to it. And we'll talk about that quite a bit, actually. And we can enrich those events uh, as they are being passed on to someone else whose job it is then to, to do something about it to try and fix it or figure out what's going on. So we could take information that we've got about the devices or systems, take information that it maybe has been added to StableNet from another third-party system, an inventory system or something, add that information into the alert and then pass it up to the appropriate person or maybe even an appropriate other system. Uh, we have both event-based and state-based fault management. That's a bit unique uh, or, or certainly very important. Um, so we can watch for events as they come in, again, a lot of times through log messages, but we can also uh, calculate the state of a device or of a service or of a system uh, from our own performance monitoring system. So we're watching. We can take uh, KPIs from systems. We can um, use those KPIs to form the foundation of a what we call a monitor, which then uh, creates an alert if there's a, a, a KPI that's outside the monitor or something like that or outside the threshold, I'm sorry. Uh, we are completely multi-vendor discovery. We begin with the discovery as we onboard devices, and that discovery gives us a lot of information about that system and then automatically does a number of things. And, and if there's one or two major takeaways I want you to have from this presentation, uh, automation is one of the keywords for sure. We automate many things within the product. It starts with our automated uh, XML-based discovery, and from that discovery we do things like dependency management. Uh, so no longer do you have to write rules and dependencies amongst devices and services uh, within your estate. We can automatically do that, and that leads us to being able to automatically do lots of other things like root cause analysis and uh, other uh, pieces that of, of uh, operational benefit that you get by using StableNet. We certainly have all of the other things that you would expect, like traps and syslogs, uh, collection, email, uh, the ability to do uh, get alerts out of the system through email, SMS, visual alarms, audible alarms, out to trouble ticket or, th or third party service desk systems, uh, the ability to display the current state of your network in what we call weather maps, which are customizable, very uh, visual maps showing systems, interconnections among systems uh, overlaid on top of any kind of uh, maybe geographic map or data center map or anything that you really want. All of those things that you really must have in a modern uh, fault management architecture today are baked into the product out of the box. So we move on now to uh, E. E is for enabling stable net status measurements uh, to reduce complexity and in, in many cases also reduce cost. This is a really interesting and unique feature that has a lot of benefit in large environments. And again, that's the, the typical customer profile for us is many devices, thousands, tens of thousands of devices. Um, as you can see from the graphic here, the sort of classic approach to syslog and trap measurement in particular is if you know, hey, there are uh, 12 things, 12 uh, uh, messages that you need to or want to alert on that could be coming from one of your systems. And it could be 12 is just a number we have here. It could be 10, it could be 30, it could be 50. It doesn't matter if there's a lot of things that you know you want to alert on in a, in a classic uh, fault management system, you would have to set up an individual monitor in our terminology or whatever the terminology is of that system to look for each of those things from every one of those devices. And uh, most systems or many systems, including StableNet, typically are uh, scoped out and priced out by the number of those uh, measurements that you're doing. So if you have to do 12 or 20 for, you know, 1,000 or 10,000 devices, you could see how quickly that would add up. A better way to do it, uh, and one of the options available within StableNet, is to use what we call a status measurement. Uh, at a status measurement, what we're doing is the system, StableNet, is still watching all of the log messages coming in for each of those 12 type uh, 
filters, if you will, or characteristics or information. It could be an OID in a trap. It could be a, some sort of a message or text and a syslog, what have you. We're still watching all of those things. But then when we see them come in, when we see one come in that matches the filter, it gets essentially distributed or uh, populated down to each of the individual devices, uh, along with information about which device sent the uh, message in the first place. Uh, so if it's the name or the IP address of the device, then that device alarms. The other devices ignore it. Even though it's been internally distributed to them, they just say, hey, that one's not about me. I'm not going to alarm. In that way, uh, you only need to have a single status measurement underneath each device that is waiting for one of the alarms uh, coming from the global system, if you will, to be distributed down to it. So instead of having a multiplier of 12, in this case, times X number of devices, you only set those 12 up once and then have a single measurement uh, underneath for each device. You save um, an immense amount of uh, uh, complexity in terms of having to set up each one of these things for every device and maintain them uh, constantly if you tried to do it the, the classic approach way. The, uh, the modern approach way reduces the number of measurements you need, reduces the complexity, probably reduces the cost of the system, uh, and so forth. So this is very interesting and, and something if you uh, want to learn more about, we can certainly have a demonstration for you of this topic. But uh, it's very useful in, in big environments with lots of uh, event-based uh, measurements and monitors. Moving on uh, to A in T's. A is for augmenting fault management with what we call business process scripts. So a business process script, or sometimes you'll hear us talk about user scripts, these are additional ways of extracting that um, uh, KPI information out of a device, which is then used as the basis of a, a monitor, a, a fault. So. Uh, many systems, of course, and lots of systems support SNMP, but sometimes you can't get all the information out of SNMP from a particular device that you want. Sometimes it has to come from a command line and you parse the result, or it comes out of, you know, in the case of a Windows server, it might be something in the registry or that you can only get from PowerShell or what have you. There are many, because we deal and, and support many different kinds of devices and new devices are happening, um, coming in all the time. Sometimes there's just no better way than to have to be able to run a script against, a script against that device. Uh, StableNet supports the execution of a number of different types of scripts. Some examples are there, Java, Perl, PowerShell, etc. Really, whatever is necessary, we can probably run a script uh, using that language or that type of interface, that API, to get the information. We gather that information. We then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, use our monitors to create KPIs, or use our measurements to create KPIs, use our monitors to create a uh, fault state uh, against those KPIs. StableNet actually comes with a variety of, or, of scripts out of the box. There's a, a whole list of them handling some very generic things like uh, a URL monitor for a website where you can put in a URL and a username and password and we'll hit that URL and download, make sure it's available and potentially even set up thresholds for how fast it runs, how many um, uh, uh, files are downloaded, things like that. Uh, we've also got scripts for individual applications, so Oracle or Exchange or Radius servers or a whole number of other things out of the box. But what's really important is that these can be extended, these can be adjusted, or completely wholly new ones could be created by you uh, and added, uploaded to the agents, and those agents can then execute those scripts, right? So if, you, if there's something that uh, we do that's 90% of what you want, it can easily be adjusted. If you've got something that's totally different from what we have out of the box, you can write your own or you can work with our professional services team to write your own, and we'll make sure we get into the system. It's that open, flexible, customizable architecture that I talked about in the beginning, which allows this sort of advanced capabilities using business process scripts. So this is one of those... Um, capabilities that is really important um, if you've got, a, again, a big environment with some unusual system 
systems or devices uh, that really just don't have a quote unquote, unquote standard like SNMP type way of getting what you need out of it, it can be done with a business process script. Our fourth uh, letter in our acronym today is S. S is for syslog and trap pre-processing for large environments, and it's that pre-processing uh, that's really the key here. We, I've talked quite a bit already about sort of normal trap and syslog uh, watching, and then you can put a filter and create a monitor and distribute that with a status measurement. But what, um, what we also find is we have a number of customers who just have so many uh, traps and syslogs coming from their various devices. If, again, if you think of a large environment, a telco that's got many, many thousands of switches, routers, firewalls that are generating millions of, of traps and syslog measurements all the time, then really it's, it can be difficult to filter down uh, to the ones that are important. There's just this overwhelming amount of information. So what, what's a, uh, something that we can do is to pre-process those. In other words, process them very quickly and locally by the agent and drop things that are irrelevant. Um, this cuts down on the amount of storage and processing that our uh, central server and database need to handle. Um, it even just cuts down on network traffic potentially, uh, uh, the, how, depending on how things are set up. Uh, we can do things on those messages right at the agent level initially, things like change of severity. So if, I, if, a, if a syslog is message is coming in with a particular severity, but you want that to be a higher or lower priority severity, it can be changed before it is stored in our system or before it is sent off to a third party system. We can change text. We can actually do like a text replacement. If it says X, we make it say Y. Um, and we can, they're fully, uh, the filters on those things are fully reg, uh, regex supported, so you can use a, a replacement using regex. So we can um, effectively enrich or change information even as it comes in from those log messages. We can filter out irrelevant things to uh, really streamline the process. We have many different rules that can be implemented for storage, so what gets saved, what gets uh, put into the database, does it just get dropped? You can alarm on something but then drop it um, so that you're not storing it for the future. You may not want to do that again. It helps keep the database smaller. Um, you can hide it in the GUI, in our GUI, right? So it comes in, it's processed, but it's just not visible for someone. You can even use it to do things like trigger actions. One uh, very common scenario is to watch for a syslog message that indicates a device has been, a device's configuration has been changed. And if that configuration has been changed, hey, we want to automatically trigger a new backup of the config of that device, right? So um, the ability to do this on a huge scale, on a very large scale, um, to process these things, change these things, trigger actions on these messages, and then ultimately only store and display uh, a much smaller subset that you want makes uh, handling this huge amount of uh, log messages very possible and increases the scalability, performance, everything in the system. So again, I invite you to take a look at that more in depthly, and we've got some great examples of customers that are doing that today that, that we can uh, talk to you about. And our last uh, letter in our acronym that is hopefully teasing you a little bit uh, to want to see more is E for what we call enhanced next generation log message processing. Again, this is additional ways to process log messages. Think of this as most generally a way to process log messages that don't come from a syslog or from a trap. Maybe it's a log file on a server. That's sort of the most common scenario. Um, but any kind of um, uh, logs that we can get to on a server or system or device, we can actually process that locally using one of our client agents that's installed directly on that system. It could be a Linux system, Windows system. We have a client agent. We can investigate that log file source, whether it's a, a CSV file, it could be a URL that we use, it could be a actual file system that we use. We can um, create a pattern match that we're looking for, um, or a condition match that we're looking for within those log files. It could be, you know, that there are uh, more than 20 log files. So it could be a condition or it could be, hey, investigate the actual logs and see if we find a particular text string or something 
And if so, then we create that alarm, that monitor within StableNet. Again, we can put custom text into it so we can enrich it with custom text. We can change the severity. We can pull in additional information from variables or other match patterns to create the alarm that's useful for that end user, that person in the NOC who needs to identify and investigate this situation. Um, our parser supports full arithmetic, and, and that means we can do lots of things with these logs. Um, we can even log the health of our own script or of other scripts that are happening. So this, this uh, log ng, ng for next generation capability that we have allows you to get even deeper into the devices or systems that have critical uh, fault information in buried inside a log file someplace or a CSV file someplace and we can use this script to extract the important fault information, uh, enhance it, enrich it, pass it out to StableNet and then ultimately of course to the people whose job it is to take care of those things. So. Um, just be one last thing, it didn't fit into our acronym, but uh, again, these are some of the most important takeaways uh, of uh, today's session, hopefully. Um, again, the automated capability, a lot of what I've described is wrapped up in or surrounded by all of the automation. So as things change within your network, you don't necessarily have to change things within StableNet. And even if you do, it's typically a very single, one-line kind of change uh, within StableNet that then gets automatically applied to every device or every system. Um, really what we work with you on is to understand the business rules, what's necessary from a business perspective, not what device is um, uh, connected to what other device and what rules and dependencies need to be monitored. We take care of all of that in the background. What we're interested in is the business rules, what needs to happen, what do I really care about. And then if we need to, we can make changes uh, very rapidly, which gets automatically applied to everything. And the good news is those changes typically are pretty rare. You do a bunch of work up front, you do a lot of planning, you get it implemented correctly, and then most likely there aren't that many changes going on uh, on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month basis. Those changes are rare, which is great. Then you can spend less time administrating in our system and more time working at higher levels within your own network and your own systems. So uh, that automation capability, that implementation of a business rule instead of a, a lot of manual labor around dependencies and other rules is just all taken away. It's a much better way to do things. So. With that, I'm going to take a few minutes. I know we're getting close to the end of the half an hour here. I'm going to dive into the live demo. While I do that, I'm not sure, Deepmar, if there are any uh, questions that have popped up or anything that people might uh, have mentioned that they are interested in. Uh, yeah, well, indeed, since we have a pretty large crowd uh, in our webinar today, there have been uh, actually more than just a few questions. Um, I don't know if you want to do the, the live demo first, or but maybe one of the questions uh, that you could elaborate a little bit more on is uh, we're having a, a number of people in here who are not that familiar with, uh, well, the StableNet internal terminology. So maybe you could uh, elaborate a little bit on what uh, a measurement actually is in, inside the stable and content. You mentioned it uh, with the uh, status measurements, so maybe do elaborate a little bit more on that. Absolutely, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. As I said, there's, there's people on the session that I know are, are sort of new to us, and so we have our own unique terminology. Um, probably the two most important terms that I've used a number of times today are measurements and monitors. Uh, this is, the, again, InfoSim or StableNet terminology. Uh, a measurement is uh, what it sounds like. Uh, it, it is uh, the idea of capturing some information about a device or from a system or a device uh, that um, gives you a, a, either a KPI, a key performance indicator, um, or some information about this, the current state, right? So I, I always use um, ter, uh, an analogy that a measurement is similar to um, taking vital signs from a human being. Your measurement is your temperature, 
your measurement is your blood pressure, your measurement is your cholesterol levels. These are our numbers or indicators uh, that tell you what the health of a system could be. We get those KPIs, we get those measurements using things like SNMP primarily, of course a ping uh, for availability, an SNMP poll of K, uh, KPIs. Um, it, we also gather them from things like um, uh, could be from NetFlow data, IPSLA data, anything, those, those business process scripts, those user scripts that, that we can uh, run a command line uh, against and parse the output. All of those things are ways of measuring the current performance and, and in today's focus, the current fault state of a device. Uh, it doesn't matter in StableNet how how often you run those measurements, what the polling interval is, or how many times you take a measurement. Uh, what really matters to us is just how many measurements you need. So an individual device, if we look on the screen right now, this particular router, London, uh, has a number of measurements. It has a ping measurement, it has a bunch of interface measurements, five or so interface measurements. It's got measurements for the processor, for what we call specific things, in this case, uh, memory and temperature, power supply states, things like that. It's got flow measurements. It's got, um, these are uh, syslog measurements at the bottom where we're measuring to see if a syslog matches a filter that we set up. So all of these measurements are a way of gathering information for us. And then a monitor underneath each one of these, you'll see you have at least one, if not potentially more monitors. If I open up an interface, I might have, in this case, three monitors, the monitor, or four monitors. These monitors, these little lights are what we call monitors. These are now getting that information from the device and applying a threshold to it or a state to it. So if we're looking at errors, it could be as a percentage uh, of uh, errors that we're watching for, and if we go above that percentage, we create an alarm. Um, it could be a state, so many times, um, you know, uh, uh, you might have a, a system that indicates its, its current state as a number, one equals up, two equals down, three equals standby, something like that. So we can uh, watch for that, take that state in, and then if it, we see a two in the state, that creates an alarm, right? So uh, we call all of those alarms or the watching of the KPI data or the state data as a monitor. And then a monitor, when a monitor happens, it can trigger an action. Typically, it triggers an email or a text. It certainly triggers something on the screen. You can see this blinking. There could be an audible alarm. It could be a script that we run. It could be a, a trouble ticket automatically gets cut in your trouble ticket system. So when we have a monitor, um, most of the time we trigger then some action, including just a notification as well as potentially some additional things. So those are the real key terminologies, measurements and monitors within StableNet. And again, if you think of the, the uh, vital signs of a human, I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm watching my blood pressure, and if my blood pressure, that's my measurement, and if my blood pressure goes above a certain number, that's my monitor. That triggers an alarm, and you know, uh, in a human's case, you go to the doctor, and network management, you send an alert to somebody or trigger some action. So hopefully those terms make a bit more sense now. Okay. You've uh, actually triggered a follow-up question. Maybe <laughs> just a uh, uh, short answer because we're almost uh, at the end of our half hour. Uh, could you give us you know, one or two sentences on uh, the purpose of flow measurements? Yeah, so a flow measurement is, comes from NetFlow. Um, if you're familiar with NetFlow, it's just another way of getting data, a more advanced way of getting information about conversations that are happening in your network. So SNMP will tell you how much traffic is going through an interface. Uh, NetFlow will tell you who is having the conversation, the source and destination IP, source and destination port, and so on. And so uh, you can then trigger uh, monitors based on that sort of more detailed information about a conversation or an application, which can be very useful. Okay, thank you for that. And as short as I could. <laughs> no, that was that was very sw short and sweet. <laughs> and um, I have picked a final question that uh, I thought might be interesting for everybody to hear. Um, the question is: If StableNet is possible, it's possible for StableNet to monitor transactions of users on application service, WebSphere, .NET, etc. Can we do that? 
We can, and we do that again most generally using one of those business process scripts or user scripts that can capture that kind of information. Um, it, it's possible that that information can be exposed to us via SNMP or WMI or something standard. Depending on the, the service, it's possible that we need to go into more detail using a user script to extract that information, um, potentially even running a synthetic transaction against an application to get data. So the short answer is yes, we can. How we get it or the best way to get it, we probably need to talk to you about uh, for your particular app. All right. Thank you very much. So I guess that's all the questions now. Will you continue with, with that live demo? Maybe we have some, some additional questions after that. Yeah, let's, let's take one or two minutes just to familiarize people with the GUI. I've done a bit of it uh, in my explanation of measurements and monitors. You can see the system we're in right now. I'm in what we call the measurements theme. This is where you see the alerts and alarms. You can see the status. We have many other themes for other parts of the product, like inventory and reporting, of course. Uh, the weather maps that I mentioned earlier come in the network inspection area. So everything is, is in one one application, one GUI, one screen. We also have a web portal that displays the exact same uh, result information to you. The, the whole system can be administered and used from this GUI. In this measurement area, I see my tree of, of devices and my uh, grouping, which can include, can be done any way you want. It could be location-based or it could be um, line of business based or device based or some combination, you know, routers within uh, this country, within this line of business or something. And then ultimately you have the individual devices, you have their measurements, you have their monitor states all available to you. You can very quickly go in and click on them, you can see what's happening, you can see the current state. Obviously if there's some sort of color, you can see what the issue is. Um, uh, it's very easy to drill down to see what's going on. If I was to look at this device that has something, I can certainly just open it up and I play. I say play follow the colors. I can see it's this syslog that is alarming and this syslog is based on looking for this, right? So I'm looking for packet drop due to input, right? That's kind of the expression that I'm filtering on on this device and if I see that, I'm creating a monitor which I have currently, my little uh, development sort of demo system here has lots of alarms. Uh, it's useful for presentations. Um, I can also use this to just, uh, oops, let me go back. I can use this to just go through all of the alarms. Those of you who are familiar with Netcool and other products like that, they're essentially just a big list of alarms as they come in. We can make that same exact kind of view available to you. Just here they are. Um, I can go from alarms, I can see current syslogs or traps that are coming in. Um, I can do things on these alarms, so I can, um, if I double click on one, I get more information about it, including the ability to add tickets or comment information, see the alarm impact, which can include specialized information about the some other ID or customer or partner or class of service or these are these fields can be adjusted to fit your business. So it doesn't always say customer, it could say something else. In our case it does. Um, I can acknowledge alarms, I can close alarms, um, I can filter, so I can very quickly you know, search for them or filter down using a simple string or a regular expression uh, to identify certain alarms. I can acknowledge them or unacknowledge them or clear them, so I can do lots of things with these alarms as I see them them come in. So anybody that's nor that's used to um, that sort of, again, I'll call it net cool alarm uh, screen, you'll still be very comfortable and familiar with StableNet, but you'll have lots of additional information like the alarm impact, where I can see what's really happening and, you know, what kind of alarm, where does this fit, is, this, is there a lot, something going on with availability or services or is it a database problem or anything else that I'm getting from uh, one of my business process scripts you can drill in and, and see what's going on here. So this screen allows you to see all of that information, drill down into that information, uh, work with those alarms, again, tickets or acknowledgments, show the root cause automatically, which we always do. So if there is uh, multiple faults that are happening because of a single root cause, we automatically identify what that root cause is and display that to you uh, directly in the system. So uh, that was a bit quick, but I know we're over the time here now, so I wanted to, to uh, keep it 
simple. If we can, uh, if anybody has more uh, questions or requires a more detailed uh, view into the GUI, we certainly can set up a private session for you to, to go through all of that. And with that, I will turn it back to me. The presentation. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, take it away. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, we already have uh, two requests for additional web sessions. Um, both of them are on those status measurements, so I, you probably hit a nerve there, John. So we'll get to you after the webinar and uh, agree on a, a specific date. And... Um, what else was there? Let me just let me just browse those questions. Um, monitoring transaction on the application server, we've done that. And uh, oh yeah, well uh, there was as usual there was a number of questions on uh, the presentation slides. If those would be available at a later date, and uh, of course they are available. Just uh, send a quick email to uh, my email address. I'll put that in the uh, chat in a second and then I can make those uh, slides available to you via email. Um, also, maybe another thing to mention, there's an upcoming release of StableNet 7.0, so uh, please make sure you're on our mailing lists and uh, so you're able to receive all the invites for the What's New session in March. And um, as John has changed uh, to the resources slide, just a little hint that uh, we have a lot more information on our website. Uh, in the resources section, you can see it on the slide, there's a, a number of collateral on uh, uh, a lot of different topics. So uh, that's pretty much everything from my end. So thank you very much, John, for uh, your presentation and the live demo. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining our session today. As I've mentioned earlier, a recording of this webinar will be made available to all of you via email tomorrow. And again, if you have any other questions, feel free to contact uh, John, myself, or any other member of the staff with InfoSim. We will keep the session open for a few more minutes in case anyone from our audience decides to type in another question. Uh, and again, we'll take care of those uh, one by one. And uh, also, when leaving this webinar, you will be presented with a short questionnaire that helps us to improve our webinars and also pick the right topics for future webinars. So if you would please take a minute and answer those, that would be very much appreciated. Well, I guess that's all from us today. John, any final words? No, I just want to thank everyone for attending today. I hope it was useful, and I hope to see you again on a future one. Okay, well, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.